we gather to remember the Honourable Peter George Underwood, not just the shock and sadness of the past few days, but to give thanks for a whole life. He was an intrinsically honest man. A man of outstanding intellect, achievement, integrity and warmth. Peter was, by any measure, an extraordinary person. Peter Underwood had all the qualities one needs in a governor. Intellect, integrity, compassion, grace, charm, passion, moral courage, a sense of humour and an ability to relate to people from all walks of life. And what a remarkable governor he was. For me, his most important role was that of father. As I made my way through life as a boy, a young man, and more recently as a father myself, he was always there, ready to advise, mentor, and guide me when I'd seek his counsel, and sometimes when I didn't. He was a father who could be relied upon, a father of whom I was always so proud, a father who was always there when life got tough, a beautiful man in every sense of the word, beautiful in body, powerful in intellect, quick-witted, sparkling and courageous of spirit, loving, compassionate in nature and fun and exciting to be with. I saw too at first hand his zest for guiding and teaching younger practitioners, devoting much of his time after busy court sittings conduct mock trials and mentoring students in mooting competitions. As Chief Justice, he masterminded reforms to the pre-trial procedures in the criminal jurisdiction. Those reforms more than halved the delays between accused persons being charged and the disposition of their cases in the Supreme Court. Peter believed that regardless of your position, no one was above the law. As a judge, he was impressive because of his fairness, his efficiency, his quick legal mind and his courtesy. Whatever Dad's decision, I knew that it was considered and fair. It was also based on the values which Dad considered of greatest importance. In private, they were family, fun, friendship and learning. In public, they were justice, equality, peace, and human rights. His energy was infectious. He liked getting things done. He represented the Commonwealth in the landmark case that resulted in the protection of the Franklin River. He accompanied me to Melbourne in the lead up to our little gypsy's open heart surgery. He was a father who, was always, who always made me feel secure a father who was gracious. He took on the role of the chair of the board of the Friends School. He was the catalyst in ensuring that the school was able to continue to offer the best education and opportunity for the benefit of its students, whilst always adhering to its principles and its culture. He was my north, my south, my east, my west. My working week, my Sunday rest. My noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. Do not forget the passions he pursued and the great example he set us on how a life may be lived. A life that embraces service to others, tolerance for different others, empathy for others, the courage to express views which are different from the views of others, and a life that is resolute for peace, lest we forget.